and gas laws, we are going to study laws of gases. Uh, for, for today, we're only going to do the first two objectives. We're going to understand and properly use the properties to describe gases. Also, recognize units. Uh, quick review. Phases of matter. Solids have a defined shape and a defined volume. They can hold their shape and they occupy a certain amount of space. Liquids occupy a certain amount of space, which is defined. That's the volume, like we measure in a graduated cylinder. But they take the shape of their container. So gases are the different one. They have no definite volume and no definite shape. They expand to fit the container they're in. And they fit their entire container. Kind of like this room, we can think of a container of gas. There's not a part of the room where there's no, no oxygen or no nitrogen. Everywhere you go in this room, there's different amount, different gases. There's, uh, there's gas that expands to fit it. The properties of gases. I will pause it here, and you guys can take this down. All right. Properties of gases. These are the first two. Volume, which is the amount of space the gas occupies. Pressure is the amount of force exerted by the particles colliding. So... The units, we've talked about these units of the volume, liters, milliliters, etc. The units uh, that we're going to talk about of pressure are atmospheres. So one atmosphere is, is the average pressure on Earth at sea level. Uh, kilopascals, that's the physics definition. And also the uh, older one, the millimeters of mercury, also referred to as TOR, T-O-R-R. -R. Um, we don't use those much anymore, but... Now, sometimes you'll see them, maybe. Other properties of gases continued. Moving on. All right, temperature. Now, this is uh, some, a new way we've been going to think about temperature. Uh, it's uh, Temperature measures the average kinetic energy particles. We talked a little bit about that when we talked about heat and energy. Effectively, an average of how fast the particles are moving. And we use... Temperature Kelvin for gas laws, we know that formula. Temperature Kelvin's 273 more than the temperature Celsius. Um, moles, the last one. The variable for moles is N because it's the number of moles. That's why number of moles measures the number of particles. Okay? And the unit's moles. Is that not English? Moving on. <laughs> Kinetic molecular theory. So copy down these points on the thing Mr. Cross is going to pass out, right? The kinetic molecular theory is a theory. Uh, kinetic means motion. Molecular means molecules. And theory means theory. So the kinetic molecular theory is that a theory that particles are in constant motion, that collisions are elastic. That just means there's no energy lost in the in the in the collisions. So, like, if you can imagine a perfectly elastic collision, if, if you had like a golf ball and you dropped it and it would come up to the same point every time, so it's not possible because there's air in the way every time, so the air slows it down. The more air, the more it slows it down. The more friction. So, but particles are so small, we can assume that particle volume is negligible. That means we don't, in the gas, the particles uh, that the actual space the particles occupy is so small compared to the overall volume, it's less than 0.1%. I think I calculated it was 0.08%, so less than a tenth of a percent. It's like uh, if, if you had like a, uh, $100, it would be uh, about eight pennies of that $100 worth of uh, space. So very small amount of also, the particle movement is directly related to kinetic, uh, sorry, temperature Kelvin. So, um, if you have zero Kelvin, that's absolute zero, which I believe was on a Jeopardy question I saw the other day. Um, good, good trivia question. Absolute zero is when we have zero particle movement. It's zero Kelvin. And as you increase the Kelvin temperature, particles move faster and faster and faster. Okay. So, moving on, we actually did this uh, gas uh, simulation. Should we Should we show it again, Costa? Yeah. All right. So, let me pause this. So, 
Um, wait, are we, we're not getting, are we getting any pressure yet? No. Yeah, we are. Okay. Are you recording? Yes. Take, let's take a break. Okay. All right. So right now, face, face the board. Uh, so there are particles hitting us right now. Right? There's oxygen molecules and nitrogen molecules that are colliding with Augustine's head as we speak. <laughs> right now, it's happening. Uh, it's true. Do we feel it? No, no why not? Because we're awesome, and there, there's actually there's a lot of them, though. So it's not because they're tiny. We actually don't feel it because we're used to it. What? We're used to these particles. That's what we call atmospheric pressure. So babies are used to those particles? Yep. The right, ba right, right. So we're designed. Humans are, humans are, sorry, we evolved. What do you mean we designed? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I got to edit that out. So humans have evolved to be, humans have evolved to, to a point where we don't uh, we don't have uh, sensitivities to our atmospheric pressure, but we do notice it when you go up into like an airplane, or if you go down to the bottom of the pool. Has you guys ever dove to the bottom of the pool and your ears hurt? Yeah. That's because you're under pressure. There's air in your ears and it pushes on your eardrums. So that's what pressure is. You notice changes in pressure. We don't notice atmospheric pressure now. So, and if you ever talk about measuring pressure, that's where you know we're talking about it in the weather. Um, you know, low pressure systems, if you have a barometer and keep track of it, which I do, you can, when there's low pressure, you expect to have rain coming. And when high pressure, it's normally you sunny. Know when the rain's coming? A little yeah. bit. I actually, I watch, I watch the weather channel. I have the weather channel app. It's awesome. <laughs> it's great. So, under pressure, they, gases exert pressure. The pressure exerted by uh, the gas mixture we call is atmospheric pressure. The atmosphere surrounds the Earth. It's like a, you know how there's, the ocean is a sea of water? The atmosphere is like a sea of air around us at all times. So, uh, why is air exerting pressure? Now, I know you guys, it, it makes more sense when there's a lot of water on top of you, but there's a lot of air on top of us right now. So there's enough air to exert one atmosphere of pressure. Okay? So, like, there's, if right above us, there's a bunch of air pushing down on the school, all the way up into the upper atmosphere. And the higher you go, the less pressure there is, because there's less air on top of you. Just like when you're on the bottom of a pool, there, there, if, you just, if you're shallow diving, there's not much pressure. But the more water that's on top of you pushing you down, the more the pressure is. That's why when the, you have these submarines that go very deep underwater, they have to be really strong to withstand that force because there's a lot of stuff on top of them. Um, and likewise, the uh, reverse is true when you go high altitudes like airplanes. They have to be very strong because they have to hold in the air pressure. Yeah. Your ears hurt when you go up in an airplane. That's because there's a difference in pressure. But they have to hold all that air in because the air is pushing out there. They have to maintain cabin pressure. You might have heard that term. So we measured pressure in millimeters of mercury. You just don't write this down. We'll write this down later. Um, and I'm going to explain what millimeters of mercury actually means. So one atmosphere of standard pressure. So uh, don't don't copy this down, but uh, uh, Evangelista Torricelli, he was a he was a scientist. He was Italian, and he took a column of mercury and just flipped it over into a, into a pool of mercury. And he found out that the level went down only to a certain point, to 760 millimeters. So, which is, just, it's about, um, it's, uh, that's a little less than a meter. So it's about, it's about 700, 75 centimeters about, 76 centimeters, excuse me. So that's how far the atmosphere supported a column of mercury. And if you guys take a look back at Mr. Cost, I think he's going to show you a column of mercury. So, let's see. This was atmospheric pressure, the mercury barometer. Oh, and uh, that's it for today, guys. We're gonna, next, next class, we're going to talk about Irish scientist Boyle. Bob Boyle.